And I can't help to find it weird that in 2022, there are no people living in the hometown of Jesus. We are at the Sea of Galilee in the middle of a storm, reviving what happened 2,000 years ago. Welcome to a new video of Dave's in Israel. Today, we head to Capernaum, Jesus' hometown, a city that's been abandoned for some mysterious reason, and today, nobody lives there. Some people say the city is empty because Jesus cursed it. But there is more. Capernaum is the city home of the Sea of Galilee, where Jesus calmed the legendary storm. I have always dreamed of being in the rain here. Will we be able to witness a storm during our stay? Why does nobody live in the home city of Jesus? We will cover these questions throughout the video. But first, let's get some wheels. As you know, this is Tel Aviv, Israel's capital, approximately 62 miles from Galilee. It's going to be a long trip. Okay. Have a good day. You too. Okay. Okay, that was unexpected. Oh man, this is crazy. I mean, yeah, this is too much. I think I maxed out my excitement limits today. This marvelous car will take us there to walk where Jesus walked in Capernaum. We head to the mound where Jesus taught the Beatitudes, to the house where Peter lived, to the synagogue where he preached at Capernaum, and to the Sea of Galilee where God willing, the storm will meet us. The sun today is too bright. It's really unlikely to see any rain, but who knows? Man, I'm so excited about this trip. You see, Capernaum was a fishing town located by the Sea of Galilee in the northern region of Israel. Jesus called some of his disciples in this place. Peter, Andrew, James, and John dropped their nets to follow him. He also called Matthew, the tax collector that people hated. He was around here where Jesus performed countless miracles, like healing the centurion's servant and even the paralyzed guy who was lowered through the roof. He preached about the kingdom of God in the synagogue and visited different houses across the town. That is why Capernaum is known as the home city of Jesus, because there he settled his base of operations. Alright, dear viewers, this is our first stop. We're retracing Jesus' footsteps, the Mount of Beatitudes. And of course, you can see the Church of the Beatitudes right behind us. The church bears that name in honor of Jesus' famous sermon about the eight Beatitudes. The distinctive ways of God's kingdom, the radical explanation of how things are in the kingdom different from anything known by mankind. The landscape is stunning. Look at this place, the style. This is such a quiet place, not at all similar to the other places we went to. In the other videos, look at the well-tended gardens, the lake and the Sea of Galilee in the back, the birds, the true blue waters. So quiet, so, so quiet. Come check this curious fact. There is a guest house in here. There is a guest house right across the church, in front of the church of the Beatitudes. That means people can come here to spend the night in the very same spot that Jesus shared his most famous message. I'm still blown away by some of these things. They are stunning. Thanks, Verity. Thanks. Don't you picture Jesus sitting here and saying, Blessed be the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The crowd surrounding him in utmost admiration. When Matthew is taking notes, dude, this is so crazy. Look, I'm not sure the camera will actually pick this up, but goose flesh. Real, real goosebumps. Not kidding. You can't help it. This is fascinating. Dream with me for a moment. Can you see Jesus sitting here? Surrounded by his disciples. People sitting by the foothill. What can I say? I'm on cloud nine. This is only the beginning, folks. We have plans for four sites today. And here we are, following Jesus' footsteps. Hey, there's a cloud over there! There's a cloud over there! There's still a chance! Okay, this is Capernaum, folks. Do you see where I am? The Sea of Galilee. 
Negative, no signs of rain as of yet. But don't lose hope, there's still a chance that it will rain later. I still struggle to put my feelings into words. The feeling in my chest as a follower of Jesus, this is enthralling. To be here in his hometown, to be able to walk along the shores he walked, to be able to stop where he stopped, truly I tell you, I feel so privileged. We are walking down the stairs, heading to the pier, the Capernaum pier. It is startling though, how empty is this city? Jesus' hometown. And I promise to tell you why does nobody live in the home city of Jesus in 2022. That is exactly what I want to touch on right now. The Messiah did not have it easy in this city. He had to deal with the opposition of religious leaders who blamed him for blasphemy and accused him of breaking the law. This blatant misconception passed around the city and many people consider him a false prophet. That is why Jesus curses Capernaum so harshly. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? No, you will be brought down to hate. What happened to Capernaum after the death and resurrection of Jesus? It appears that over the first few years of Christianism, the city remained in a position of prominence. However, as time went by, the city's glow began to wane. Changes in commercial routes, wars and conquers, slashing earthquakes and changes in the course of the Jordan River, the city's headwater, all these factors combined put out Capernaum's glow slowly. And all there's left to see now are the ruins of what once was the hometown of Jesus. Okay, bro, this is, this is overwhelming. I can't... I can't believe it. Come check this out. Come see this. Check this out. Wow. Okay, we could call this the hallway. Let's say there is a sign with your do's and don'ts, things you can do and things you cannot do. Here is a map, a very interesting map of what you're about to see. Here we are, right here. We're going down the coast, heading east, visiting the attractions we came here to see. I love the detail they put into this place. There are signs every number of steps to remind you of what happened on these shores. It was in this spot where Jesus called Peter and his brother Andrew. It was in this very same shore. This very same shore, same sea, same mounts, where the first miraculous catch of fish and where the second catch, my personal favorite, took place. I want you to think about this for a moment. The other videos of this series. I want you to think about Bethlehem. And I want you to think about Nazareth. Cities that are actually overcrowded. Places that are jam-packed where you can buy anything. Now I want you to picture this. That is not exactly the same atmosphere here in Capernaum. You saw it. Nobody lives here. The city is pretty far from places like the urban centers of Israel. Alright folks, we're going to visit Peter's house now, which is now a church that was built over the house of the Apostle. Whoa. This gorgeous octagonal church was built upon the ruins of the house of Peter the Apostle. It is said that this is the place where Jesus used to live. According to tradition, this was Jesus' home here in Capernaum. One of the most famous stories in the whole Bible is the story of Jesus healing the mother of Peter's wife. The scripture says he walked out of the synagogue and walked straight to Peter's house. There is the synagogue. And there is Peter's house. Okay, my dear friends, we are walking into the synagogue. Wow. Striking as it is, this is not the original synagogue where Jesus used to preach. This one was built a few centuries later on top of the ruins of the original and replicating its original design. This synagogue was one of the largest and finest of the whole region. The limestone columns, the capital columns carved with vegetal and animal motifs. This is truly insane, the fact that I'm even standing here. I never thought of it. Come take a look at this. People show these small notes in the cracks with prayers in written, similar to what I think people do on the Wailing Wall. Astonishing. A few more strides and we finally make it to the Sea of Galilee, one of the scripture's hot spots where I'd say the spiciest events took place. Let's see if I can come nearer to the beach, it's going to be a challenge. The place is crowded today. Fellas, the Sea of Galilee.
Sophie, would you want to share what you feel right now? Nunca pensé que iba a estar acá, jamás. Y estoy muy contenta de estarlo. Do you realize that probably in this same spot, maybe not this one, but a very similar spot to this one, Jesus called Peter? Me doy cuenta. Tiene mucho sentido. Do you hear him calling right now? Eh, podría ser. Wow. I think that little guy, the younger version of myself, who back in 2017 started shooting homemade videos with the sole purpose of spreading the gospel, would fall off his chair. I'm sure he'd find it hard to believe his future self would travel half the globe to be where Jesus was and would then be able to share it with his incredible community. But frankly, being here made me notice something. It just shocks me how normal a place this is. I mean, this is extraordinary. It is an extraordinary place to come and visit, undoubtedly. But honestly, not quite beautiful in itself. It is beautiful because of what happened here. It's paramount to understand that. I mean, honestly, go sightseeing to the south of Argentina. I've seen lakes and mountains in Barrio Lodge by far more beautiful. But this place has a distinctive. Jesus was here. That is something to think about, right? It does not really matter what we have, whether it's awesome, whether it's a lot or not. It actually comes down to what we do with what we have. What do we do with our loaves of bread and our fish? What do we do at the beach we often go to? What do we do with the friends we hang out with for so long? Questions we must ask ourselves. Okay, my friends, I hug you from here, from the Sea of Galilee. It's a shame that it didn't rain. Or did it? Yes! It was not meant to rain that day, but a few days later we visited Nazareth and it did rain. So we decided to head back to the Sea of Galilee to be able to finally see a storm firsthand. The image of Jesus hovering on this water, his disciples seeing him calm the storm, it rendered me speechless. My name is David, thanks for watching, see you in our next video.